Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. David is becoming an XRP. Holder, take a look at today's banner you've created. When asked if he wants Cardano and other currencies delisted from Coinbase, the CEO responded, no. For the record, I do have some Cardano. I have been doing so since 2017. Therefore, it is not because horrible things may be occurring to developers working on top of other blockchains or projects that I suggest it is good to be an XRP holder. Not at all, not in any way, shape, or form. Instead, it's great to own XRP because it's the only cryptocurrency worth using in the USA. It has a high market cap and is completely legit. Nothing to be concerned about, really. It's possible, you know, in theory, to overturn this or that. In any case, by the time you're talking about taking it to the Supreme Court, I think Congress will have clarified the law. To save face, of course, but I think he understands that he suffered what is ultimately going to be a fatal blow when Judge Storrs came to the conclusion XRP is not a security. After all, even if in a magical land, many, many years from now that kind of return, he's not going to be in charge, and all he cares about is what H cares about what H cares about what H cares about what H cares about. And that's in addition to what's transpired in Congress, as I mentioned just now. It's fascinating to watch events evolve as they have. In this video, I wanted to share with you the news that John Deaton, the attorney I mentioned earlier, is still making progress in the Coinbase case. The judge still needs to give him permission, but it's noteworthy that people are signing up to be represented by him in the Coinbase case. But now there's a second where you're thinking, okay, he's taking that step. But he's also not doing anything really different on purpose, for reasons I'll let him explain. But before I go any further, I should state that I have no training in law or finance. I am not qualified to give you financial or legal counsel. What I say should not be used as a basis for making any financial decisions. I am merely a hobbyist who finds enjoyment in posting films to YouTube on a variety of crypto-related topics. First, I'm okay without reading your essay on this particular subject today. However, it's worth noting that the SEC's current actions have led to a lawsuit against Coinbase. You're basically saying that you're aware that the console stores around 200, or so, UFC 240 assets. 30 digital tokens are included here, with Cardano being one of 13. And the SEC is pointing the finger at them. The worst case scenario therefore involves the possibility of Cardano and other coins being delisted. First of all, they doubt that will actually occur. Second, he clarifies that this wouldn't precisely destroy their platform, but that they are actively resisting it. They have a lot of actual defenses, and they use ripples. I approve of the premise that there can't be a valid investment contract, because the SEC's significant questions doctrine means nothing if there is no contract at all. And I love the enthusiasm with which Attorney Deaton engages in these matters. Nobody else comes close to that. And I am simply, just amazed by it. What he is doing here is admirable, for sure. Since it is impossible to foresee how the Ripple situation would have developed. Everyone who joined Attorney Deaton in the end to file for Amicus merely absolutely paid a crew and played a significant role in that case, and we know this for sure thanks to the judge's ruling judge towards is really, eventually. Without it, it'll be significantly more challenging for Coinbase to come out on top. To that end, we shall wait and see. However, look at this. There are 4200 Coinbase users that are interested in having attorney Dino 4200 represent them. Look at this. Thus, the lawyer did not respond by letter or phone. There are already 4200 customers signed up to be potential. Amici Curiae Participants The SEC sued Coinbase Several LV clients have requested that I join an amicus brief in support of Coinbase's motion from yesterday. As of the 11th of August, that is. I'll halt here to mention that, as I said the other day, Coinbase has filed a move to have the SEC's case against them dropped in its hole. For two reasons, I can't say that now. This may be a very difficult or even impossible task to accomplish. 
I won't be going over that again in this video. However, that is what has been discussed, and the people the lawyer is trying to represent have inquired whether or not he will be drafting an amicus brief in support of the coin basis argument. Furthermore, the lawyer's lack of restraint The reason for this is that I have recently been granted admission to the Southern District of New York. Although I am not required to do so, I would like to clarify why on August 11th I will not be requesting permission to submit an amicus brief in support of Coinbase pending action. The legal question at the heart of Coinbase's motion is rather specific. This is a quote from Coinbase lawyer, who is represented by Deaton. Due process has been broken, discretion has been misused, and the SEC has reversed its prior interpretations of the securities laws. However, the chair acknowledged two years ago that there is a more fundamental flaw with its position, and as a result, Coinbase is entitled to judgment on the pleadings. The issues are now outside the scope of the agency's mandate. The only way the SEC can take action is if it determines that the digital assets and services at issue are investment contracts and, so, securities under the Securities Act of 1933. Additionally, the Securities and Exchange Act of 1934. All of the accusations must be thrown out of court because they are baseless. So that's what lawyer Deaton said, which Coinbase wrote, and yes, Gary Gensler was so in the back end of 2021 when he was going through, I thought it was I couldn't actually you know what, let me just pull asterisks there, it might be off. But I'm guessing that was during the confirmation hearings that took place before he became SEC chair. That's exactly what I want to say. Regardless, he should have known better than to assume the type of authority he is now asserting and going after Coinbase before he became SEC chair. However, this is not the first time we have witnessed Kim Jong-un contradict himself. Think back to the time when he attended MIT, which was either in 2018 or 2019. He said frankly that XRP lacked adequate regulatory certainty in terms of SEC guidelines. I'm putting his words into my own words, but that's the gist of what he said. And if my memory serves me well, the video was originally discovered by the Twitter slews, these people gained notoriety because Brad Garland's house shared it. In that same moment, in response to that very video, I believe he tweeted out, I love Twitter. Probably, though I'd have to look it up to be sure. However, whatever it was, it was either identical to what you witnessed or something even worse. Even if Judge Tours wasn't going to cite that precisely, which she didn't and you wouldn't necessarily expect her to, it dismantles the premise that there was some sort of legal clarity for XRP specifically. She is well aware of the unfairness of the situation. Furthermore, judges are just like everyone else. So, let me just say this. Because of this, we're basically just saying yup, like Twitter. Well, let's hear more from attorney Deaton. Coinbase argues that the digital assets named in the complaint and others purchased and sold on the exchange are not investment contracts under applicable law. Therefore, the SEC does not have the authority to take legal action against Coinbase. The Latin phrase amicus curiae translates to friend of the court in English. Judge Torres appointed me as amicus curiae because, and I quote, XRP holders may view XRP differently from Ripple, and as a result, may emphasize alternative points. Because of this, the court will have a more well-rounded understanding of the issues at hand, and will be better able to make an informed judgment. So, there you have it. That's what a friend of the court, or amicus curiae, is for. Therefore, the issue is primarily one of timing. As if John hadn't spoken up for himself, I guess. Even if more and more individuals are signing up with him, he still isn't doing anything at the time. Do something about that. It's not that the idea or notion itself isn't something he may use for something significant in the future, rather, it's a matter of timing. Nonetheless, here is what he claims. Because the Coinbase motion depends entirely on the law and the interpretation of the law by the judges. I don't think I have anything special to offer the court on behalf of customers slash token holders. The amicus brief in the Ripple case makes reference to that judge's travel. This move exclusively concerns problems of law, 
thus whether token holders or customers agree or disagree with the law or the SEC's interpretation or execution of the law is irrelevant. It's possible that the judge would view my request to be heard at this point as an attempt to get attention at the expense of the case. It's no secret that the SEC's legal team will try to present me in a bad light before the court, given their past dealings with me. Any attempts to intervene at this time may weaken the position of token holders slash customers later in the lawsuit. Furthermore, let's be honest. I have no intention of looking into Coinbase legal department, if I were to submit a brief on behalf of Coinbase token holders slash customers, it would likely just repeat what Coinbase lawyers have already said. I don't want to jeopardize our potential importance to the case by playing down our potential part in it. And thus, to remind everyone once more, this case involves a motion to dismiss based on currency base issues. If we're discussing the SEC's wider allegations, you can probably guess what kind of arguments attorney Deaton would make, but if we're narrowing in on the specific issue at hand, well, you get the picture. A quote by John Deaton. Not really my job. So, I get what he means. And he continues to elaborate. And towards the end, he makes a reference to Lewis Cohen, an attorney. Securities Law's Unavoidable Mode was written by attorney Lewis Cohen. The rest of the title is really lengthy if you read the fine print, it explains why digital assets are never considered securities, and so on. And it's the one in which he examined all the case law going back to, oh, 1946, went through virtually every case, case by case, left no stone unturned, and concluded that there has never been an investment relationship without a contract. In addition, the asset being secured has never been the underlying asset. That's the person being referred to, then. So, according to Deaton. In addition, there are likely to be other entities filing amicus papers on behalf of industry players, securities, law groups, academic institutions, or others, these entities should pay someone like attorney Lewis Cohen, who is considerably more qualified than I am to make this type of argument. John Deaton is unlikely to give much weight to the opinions of individual customers or token holders regarding what the law is or should be. As a result, on August 11th, I won't be submitting a motion in favor of the Coinbase motion. I beg you, don't. Nonetheless, I may reconsider if the SEC's summary provides a justification for retail holders slash customers to raise their voices and demand to be heard. Perhaps I will reevaluate my view if the SEC, in opposing Coinbase motion, makes unrestricted claims about tokens, token holders, and customers and does not confine its brief to issues or the application of law. The judge only allowed for two amicus brief filings, one in favor of Coinbase and one in favor of the SEC, and in the case of XRP Ripple. The amicus brief in support of Ripple's move for summary judgment from XRP holders was not filed by me. In response to the SEC's move for summary judgment, I have submitted the following brief. Just thought I'd give you guys a heads up on why next week, there won't be a filing from me. And so, I thought I'd bring it to everyone's attention, because I just don't know. I have my doubts about this. It's going to be tossed out of the way, and that's great news for me. But I'm telling you, given that Gary Gensler and I have talked this before, in case you missed it, I stated this to Gary Gensler pointed out that he's going to have a major focus going after AI artificial intelligence going forward. Apparently, AI has entered the realm of unregulated securities. You can probably anticipate the things he will say. The question is, why? Why? You know, he was going to go all out against crypto, and if that's what he wants to do, then he can do it. The SEC has a budget, and well, you could argue that it has infinite funds since it's the government, but it still has a budget. Thus, it can be said that resources are finite. Unfortunately, it's impossible to give 110% to more than one item at a time. And given who he was, well, that's crypto. Now it's his turn to make a point. Here's yet another important direction we're exploring right now. Oh, sure, this is what it is, I realized as soon as I saw it. Kim Jong Gensler has conceded 
saying he will never say ISIL renders right and hasn't given up on the other litigation, but admitting that this has been a crushing blow and that the judgment in XRP itself is not a security. Better yet, I'm not a financial counselor, so you shouldn't buy or sell anything based on anything I say, especially in light of the recent Coinbase lawsuit to a by Gary Bay. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.